so I'm just going to turn on my camera for a few seconds. Um, so I'm Arshad and I'm a blended learning coordinator working at the CLTD, but I am based at the Department of Family Medicine and Primary Care where I work on a lot of projects, um, mainly relating to instructional design. I'll hand over now to my colleague Christine to introduce herself. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm in the unfortunate position where I don't have a camera at the moment. So here's a picture of myself so you can see me. My name is Christine and I'm one of the instructional design interns working at the DFMPC. Um, it, thank you for the opportunity for today. Hey, um, thank you, Christine. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now. And could someone just let me know once it is visible? It is visible. Okay, thank you. Um, so the topic um, of today's session is developing engaging online lessons using instructional design models while promoting presence. Um, so the outline of the workshop, the things that we will be looking at is firstly the importance of presence in an online learning environment. Um, then we will look at some examples of how to create presence on Ulwazi or Canvas, which is the learning management system most of us use. Um, and then we will be looking at three instructional design models which are designed for online interaction between students and between students and teachers. And then we will uh, have a short breakaway activity which we will use the instructional design models um, which will which will be shown to design a short engaging lesson um, where you try to incorporate the uh, uh, three different types of presences and then lastly we will get feedback on um, the lessons and activities that you design um, so you might recall from the session two weeks ago by greg who discussed the importance of presence in an online learning environment. Um, so for effective and satisfying online learning experiences, um, the single most important teacher action is to be present on the course site. And research from the community of inquiry model um, suggests that your presence and engagement with your students is the most significant variable in teaching and learning effectiveness and satisfaction. Um, so the community of inquiry model, which is shown on the right hand side, um, provides guidance on the actions and behaviors that enable you to, to, to enable presence in your course. And it proposes three dimensions of presence, a social presence, a teaching presence, and a cognitive presence. Um, so let's first look at some of the ways to create a social presence in your course. And I think the best time to uh, to create a social presence in your course is during the first week or during the orientation phase of the course. And something as simple as a discussion forum or where students can introduce themselves, um, discuss their goals, their concerns, or something interesting about themselves can really create help to create uh, a social presence. Um, you can also ask students to record a short video of themselves and upload it onto um, a tool such as Padlet or a discussion board. Um, next um, is the teaching presence and uh, yeah, Christine uh, will also show you examples on Ulwazi on how to create um, each of these presences. Um, but uh, moving on to teaching presence, um, so this refers to all of the course materials that are prepared before the course actually begins, such as the syllabus, 
the um, concepts and introductions to the concepts, the choices of readings and the discussions, assignments, the assessment plans, and any of the required and recommended uh, readings or resources. Um, so some of the behaviors that could support effective teaching presence include setting clear expectations and providing supportive guidance um, with the aim of achieving the goals that your course um, sets out to do. Um, and lastly, the cognitive presence is very similar to the social presence, um, but rather than students connecting through their own personal characteristics and experiences, um, you want your students to connect through their knowledge and ideas and through their thoughts, beliefs, and cultural influences. Um, and a cognitive presence is created by students expressing their understanding of their ideas and by connecting ideas and the relationships. So by, by getting a sense of what students know and how they know it, it lays a, the foundation for customizing the, learn, the learning experiences for um, your students. Um, so now um, I'll hand over to Christine, who will show you some examples of how to create a social presence, teaching presence, and cognitive presence on Uluwazi. Hi, can anyone let me know if they can see the um, yes, we can. presentation? Okay, so I shall mention one of the, I admit, my, um, these aren't in any particular order, but one of the best ways to show teaching presence or and social presence is simply to have an about page, for example. This is where you can um, have a video to introduce the, the team who's teaching the students so that they know the can link the face to who they're speaking, who's teaching them and who's marking their assignments. Then they have ways to contact the team. They have a, the purpose of their learning, which is links to the cognitive um, and teaching presence. I'm mixing them up now, I'm sorry, but so that they know what they're supposed to learn. Um, if they know how to focus their learning, that means they don't waste time, which students always love, but it also means that um, they can be more active in their learning and proactive. This is another example of how students, how you can welcome students to the university. And this is from the Helping You Learn Online course that all students have access to. So here they have a chance to really share their social presence where they can talk about um, how they feel, what they look forward to, um, what do, and what you guys can help them with. This is again a so that they can connect with some of the students that have gone through this course and get some advice from them as well. Because it's one thing to get advice from a lecturer. It's another thing from getting some advice from another student. There's a level of empathy there that is missing from most lecturers because you're not currently a student. Well, most of us aren't. And here's just ways we get feedback from them. And how to get them to actively engage with their learning. Now, this is one of the platforms in Canvas and Uwazi that is a bit underutilized, and that is the course chat room. This is where you can find out immediate issues from your students. So you can see at this point, none of the students had access to um, turn it in and they had to submit an assignment. So here they can talk um, to each other and to the and the lecturer can also talk to them. 
in a way more casual manner. Now, this is the formal way you can um, communicate with your students. And just um, reminders, announcements. Uh, you can tell them when they're, you're going to have sessions, online sessions where you can actually speak with them. So and the announcements and the chat room pages, these um, things also, I know the announcements go directly to the student email. So this is another way that the communication gets to the student so that they don't feel that they're just looking into a void of learning. So when we usually when you start a lecture, you start today, we're going to cover this. In an online space, that is just as important to remember to do. And that helps with the um, cognitive presence, if I remember that correctly. And again, this is just one way of doing it. We also have the big blue button, which is the conference system. This is your alternative to Teams that you can use in um, Canvas. And this is the digital ability scores. Um, let me just, yes. And we all have access to this as well. We also have a tutorial on the teaching and learning or technologies for teaching um, module made by the CLTD that shows you how to set this up. And this is what it looks like. You can have your slide, you can put in visual meetings, chats, pollings. There is a way you can share notes. There is a public chat where people um, can speak to each other. And there's also a way where you can have groups um, in here as well. I haven't found the button yet, but I'll share it with, but it is in the tutorial. Then one of the ways that um, cognitive presence is shared is through assessment. And it's one thing to just have students do an assessment, they give it to you and you give them marks to them. And from us as, for us as well, that is very impersonal. It doesn't show your presence as a teacher. And that's where your um, feedback comes in. And one of the main points that gives you the mo students the most value in your teaching from your teaching is feedback on their learning. It's one thing to learn something. It's another thing to know you're learning the correct things and learning how to apply. The correct things in new ways. So I'm going to ask our star to show the next slide. Okay, just give me a second. So I am not showing you guys this um, example of the feedback system on OYZ because I don't want to share the students' names without their permission. So we have this lovely screenshot of the speed grader that I think most of the lecturers currently know quite well. But students read the comments. Rubrics also allow you to structure, give feedback without having to write it out every single time by having pre-selected answers that you could choose from. So setting up your um, rubric is very important to also streamline your 
um, <laughs> your communication process or your feedback process to students. And those are some of the examples that you have readily available to you to show your presence online. Arshad, I think we're ready for the next one. Thank you, Christine. Um, so um, to prepare you for the activity for today, um, I would like to briefly briefly introduce you to three instructional design models focused on collaboration and online interaction. Um, the first one is the HEAL model, um, which stands for Heuristic for Electronic Asynchronous Learning. And um, this model was developed in response to the lack of instructional design models available, um, which catered to the potential of technology in delivering consistent and high standard education across various settings in health sciences education. And this model was applied to an online clerkship for health sciences students in family medicine. And it's based on the idea that health sciences educators to take advantage of educational technology when developing con courses in online learning environments. Um, so uh, the theories which inform this model are based on the idea that learning is aided by a variety of factors such as problem solving, investigation and discovery, um, which is also uh, referred to as heuristics. Um, as well as collaboration among students, feedback and reflection to promote their personal wellness. And this model also seeks to assist students in developing the skills which are critical for health sciences, um, prof health professionals um, in different interrelated domains. Um, so to implement this HEAL model um, during an online clerkship, it consists of three elements which are shown in the image on the slide. Um, firstly, students are presented with informative modules which um, which illustrate the, the concepts. And um, these, mo these modules are created as pages using the institution's learning management system. So in this case, it would be Ulwazi. Um, or Moodle, um, some of you are using um, that LMS. And there are five modules for students to complete, which are focused on evidence-based medicine for the management of diabetes. Um, so that was just um, the example that was used um, in this um, article. Um, after students um, completed these modules, they do literature searches um, on evidence-based medicine and receive feedback from peers and teachers or librarians. And the second element is a problem-based case discussion um, on the concepts covered in the modules, which allows the students to apply what they have learned. And they view a video of a patient whose history suggests a case of diabetes, for example, and thereafter they review the patient's medical chart online and finally they engage in an asynchronous discussion where they suggest evidence-based ma uh, management. Um, the patient's case uh, then progresses over the course of the six-week uh, clerkship to simulate continuity of care over a period of 12 months. And the third and last element of this module is a collaborative journal discussion activity where students are provided with online readings and told to reflect on the results of applying what they did in the first and second um, elements to real patients. And the goal of this is, uh, is to advance their reflection skills as well as their self-awareness, professionalism and medical humanism. And uh, these discussions are facilitated by faculty members who are trained in online moderation and in providing students with feedback. And also um, from this um, article, it was mentioned that uh, students logged into the LMS two or three times 
a week during this program. Um, next, um, the next model is the scrambled classroom, which uh, Christine will um, briefly mention. Hello, again. Um, so the scrambled classroom is um, a bit of has a bit of a history behind it. It was a compromise between the traditional lecture model and the flipped classroom model. There are critiques to both. The flipped classroom model was made because of the limitations that the traditional lecture has. One of the pioneers of the new teaching models, Mazur, explained that the lecture made explain the lecture method as a process whereby lecture notes of the instructor get transferred to the notebooks of students with po out passing through the brains of either. In another source, I read that the traditional classroom. In the traditional classroom, students spend 90% of the time just absorbing lectures and only 10% applying what they learn. On the other hand, one cannot deny that the lecture method has been useful. The traditional lecture allows the lecturer to help students navigate the avalanche of information, information they are given. And it helps them focus on key concepts, the topics they need to stay on focus on, they need to focus on, and so forth. Now, what exactly would you define the scrambled classroom as? It is a mix of direct instruction, practice and feedback. So instead of choosing a rigid strategy, a rigid model, you're using both allows you the ability to choose the best strategy to teach the topic at hand. This means you can leverage and minimize the strengths and weaknesses of both. So what would this look like? Imagine a class where students had to do a reading beforehand. They then do a quiz in the beginning of the class and the lecturer can see where they, whether they understood the concepts or not. He then, then does a 15 minute lecture to clear up the confusion and then they give the students a task. The lecturer gives the students a task where they need to apply the new information to do a project or they need to discuss it with peers and present and answer a question. At, um, that the lecturer will ask them. At the end, the lecturer will conclude the lesson with another 15 minute lecture and some supplementary materials for students who need it. That's the beauty of the scrambled classroom. It includes the benefits of lectures, active learning activities where they can practice what they need to learn, and then a chance to get feedback from the lecturer. And it really allows you to also have freedom in planning your classrooms. And that is the scrambled classroom um, in just a few minutes. Arshad will explain the third model. That is the WhatsApp instant messenger design model. Thank you, Christine. Um, so yes, um, the, the next um, model is the WhatsApp instant messenger design model. Um, so just to give some context, um, social media based education, especially in health sciences, has expanded the uh, opportunities for learning outside of the classroom. And this has been driven especially by the widespread access to mobile devices with internet connectivity, which has made it possible for students to access a wide range of learning resources through mobile learning. So um, there is an extensive list of applications for health sciences students, which I'm sure some of you are aware of, such as up to date and clinical key, um, as well as um, many social media networks like YouTube and instant messenger applications such as Facebook Messenger, Telegram and WhatsApp. Now, although these instant messenger applications are not educational in nature, they are still able to be used to facilitate learning through common features like um, the sharing of multimedia files, 
collaborating in groups and communicating with teachers and peers um, regardless of time and location. So I'm sure you we are all familiar with WhatsApp. Um, it's a free instant messenger application and it's also one of the most popular um, messenger applications in South Africa where it's favored for its low use of internet bandwidth and the ability to function even when network speeds are slow. Um, so um, in a scoping review which analyzed the content shared and used in WhatsApp group discussions, um, it, uh, a common theme was found um, in the use of multimedia. And this includes visual and audio files. And um, this was in, um, in, in, edu in an education context. So some of the files that were shared included um, electrocardiograms, dermatology images, and infectious disease files, which were used primarily to promote a discussion and engagement. Um, and this, um, this was used ma um, mainly in, at a postgraduate level. Um, and in addition, uh, learning was uh, simulated using textual engagement, such as asking questions and pose, uh, posing problems. Um, so uh, Coleman and O'Connor proposed um, this uh, WhatsApp instant messenger design model, which aims to be a re useful resource for health science teachers who plan to um, adopt a more formal approach when implementing an instant messenger application into the teaching approach. And it's made up of a three-step process consisting of exploration, enactment, and evaluation phases to guide the, the teacher. Um, so during the exploration phase, the teacher caters a variety of information, um, such as the learning context and whether it is at the undergraduate or postgraduate level and whether it will take place in a blended or fully online environment. Um, the instructional strategy and learning activities also get selected during this phase. And some of the things you can include are question and answer discussions, multimedia file sharing and problem based learning. And the teacher also looks at challenges and issues that may arise on a social, cultural or professional level. And it's also important for them to set ground rules for mitigating um, these challenges. Um, the available instant messenger applications are also explored during this phase and the best one is selected. Um, so you don't only have to use WhatsApp, you can also use something that is institution based, um, such as Yammer, which is um, like a Microsoft Office 365 application, which um, students log in using their um, student email address. Um, so uh, during the enactment phase, um, the teacher maps this information um, to the instructional strategies and matches it with the features um, of the um, application that they selected. And then the learning objectives or outcomes, the activities and time allocations are also formally designed to ensure that the lesson is primarily educational in nature and aligns with the requirements of the curriculum. And lastly, during the evaluation phase, um, the teacher looks at student feedback regarding the convenience and the uh, usability of the selected um, application. And this phase also includes an assessment of the student participation and whether the learning objectives have been achieved. And this can be formative um, and take place as online as the on, as the online discussions take place, or it can be summative and take place once um, it, once the discussions online have been completed. Okay, um, so now we're going to move on to our breakaway activity. Um, before we move on to that, um, are there any questions or comments from anyone? Okay, um, so 
we can move on now to the breakaway activity, which um, Christine will um, explain. OK, so in this activity, we're asking you to make a flow diagram to show the structure of the lesson or activity. Um, but using one of the ID models that we showed you, so that would be the heel model, the scrambled classroom model or the WhatsApp instant messenger model, and then try to incorporate all three presences, social, teacher and cognitive. You have 15 minutes in your group to make the flow diagram. Um, and each group will have. Um, whichever. Model and a topic. So. I've shared a link to a mirror board. I would like to ask if that you would open this and let me know if you have access. Um, also, um, we are going to create breakout rooms, but um, it seems that I am unable to create breakout rooms for some reason. It might be because I'm not the organizer of this meeting or something. So, um, can I just ask Christine, can you, uh, are you able to? I can't, but if I'm correct, Angie made this meeting. Um, yes, but us. she left. She left. Um, so what I'm going to do is add a link to um, a new Teams meeting, which I created. And can I ask you all to just move to that meeting where I will be able to create um, breakout rooms? So um, I shared a link to um, a meeting. So if you could um, kindly just uh, leave this meeting and, and join the one that I added a link to in the chat. And um, I'll see you in that meeting. I'll see you there.